Hey guys, welcome to the show, Plumbing with Tim. Today I am going to show you, yes you, how you can successfully replace a garbage disposal inside of your home. So let's go take a look. Alright, so we've arrived in our kitchen area where we're going to be doing our work. And I'm going to explain to you a couple things really quick before you decide to get into this kind of job that are very important steps that you need to take before you decide to undergo or undertake this sort of job. So we're going to start by opening up underneath the cabinet here and having a look at the three main things that you need to pay attention to before you even start. You're always going to want to have some sort of a trouble light. We're going to go ahead and open up this. And up underneath here, you're going to see the garbage disposal. All right, so we're underneath the sink. Here's our garbage disposal. It's actually a one-third horsepower. This thing works. There's no problems with it. But the customer is actually requesting to get a little bit bigger horsepower. It must go up to a half horsepower instead of a third. This is an incinerator made by Badger and stuff. Let me show you the three things you need to take a look at when you're getting ready to do this job before you do anything. Okay, first thing that we need to look at is how is this drain set up? How does this water pour out? This is a single basin sink. So uh, things that differ a little bit with the drain setup, possibly when you have a double basin, but in this instance, it is a single basin sink. And we want to look and see how this drain is set up. So that way we put it back the same way. If you're bad at remembering things, you, know, you can always do is go over and just go ahead and take yourself a picture, just like that. That way, when you tear it all apart, and put it all back together, you know exactly what it is you're putting back together. Second thing that we want to take a look at before we get started is, is how does this thing getting power? In this particular case, this garbage disposal is hardwired in. It goes right into the wall, so there is no unplugging. A lot of models, or a lot of people have these garbage disposals in the house, and they have a whip that's wired in here and that just plugs into an outlet. In this case, this is hardwired in here. I'm gonna show you how you need to go about doing this for safety reasons so that you have a successful install. Third of all, do we have a dishwasher? Yes, we do. Well, the dishwasher has to drain in somewhere and in this case, it's draining in right here on the side inlet the garbage disposal. So those three factors, the drain, the garbage disposal with the dishwasher drain hooked to it, as well as how our power is going to get to here and what kind of precautionary measures we need to take in order so we don't get our pants shocked off. So let's start with plan A. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we need to get the power disconnected from this garbage disposal. Now, if you're working in a house by yourself, there's a couple ways of doing it because this is hardwired in. Remember, we can't just unplug it from the wall. A lot of people tell you, oh, you know, just make sure the switch is off and you won't get any power. Well, I don't like taking chances like that. Perhaps you have a helper with you, that's good. Or if a homeowner's in here, that's cool. What you need to do is locate where your breaker handle is. Go ahead, turn the garbage disposal on. And while it's running, go to your breaker panel and check to see if it's listed on there for garbage disposals. A lot of them, you know how electrical panels are. They're never uh, labeled properly so it's kind of a chance you might get lucky if not you're just gonna have to start looking for single breakers 120 and start flipping them off until you hear the garbage disposal turn off then you know that you have the correct circuit off all right so here's the drain piece this is the tail piece this is where your dishwasher is draining into your garbage disposal take a channel out sometimes there's a hose clamp here in this case this just happens to be a clamp and you'll loosen that up that clamp. Sorry about the lighting here. And we're going to take and move that clamp out of the way. See that? Just get that out of there. And now we're going to take and pull this hose off of here. And we still have our bucket underneath here. Nice and easy. There's going to be water sitting in this hose. So you want to make sure to have a bucket ready so it all drains down nice inside of there and we don't get water all over the place. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to save this nut and there's a ferrule, see, right there underneath it. I'm gonna save that and put that over there with the P-trap. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna disconnect this up at the top, up here, and just lay it down. And then we're gonna take the power off here and we're gonna test to make sure that we have no voltage going through here, even though we put the breaker off as well as turn off the switch. So let me show you how this thing actually comes off. Okay, so what I have, on me is a Phillips head screwdriver. See this? Up here in this area, you're gonna see little slots. 
There's three of them, one there, one there, and one on the other side. We need to take our Phillips head screwdriver and put it through one of the slots at the top. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get a little closer. See how I did that? Right there. Now we're gonna turn that clockwise and while holding the bottom of this. Remember, there still might be a little bit of water retaining inside here. That's why we have a towel down. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this dismounted from the bracket and lay it down and disconnect the rest for power. Nice and easy, see that? Just twisted it off, now we're disconnected. And we're just gonna set that down on the floor of the cabinet. And now we're gonna get our multimeter, we're gonna flip this thing over, and we're gonna test the leads on there, make sure we have absolutely no voltage in there. Remember, this is so much easier when it's just a plug into the wall and stuff, but in this case, it's hardwired. So I still have a towel, there might be a little bit of garbage or water in here. We're gonna turn this thing over on its side, and this is what we're wanting to get in. All right, you have a little plate that's sitting here with a single screw. Just loosen that screw up just a little bit with Phillips head screwdriver, like this. Just enough where that little plate will slide off. Yeah, up in here, we got a couple wire nuts and a ground. Whether you guys can see that or not, there they are. Two wire nuts and a ground. What we're gonna do first is take and disconnect our ground before we even test for power. Let's see if I can get this in here, this kind of slippery little bugger. There we go. Now remember, we don't wanna mess this up because we gotta connect this power back to the new garbage disposal. Now this is hardwired in, so I'm gonna actually have to take and pull that whole screw out of there in order to remove that ground. All right, that comes out ground is disconnected. Now we have our two little wire nuts, our two little guys right there. I'm going to take nice and easy. Our little tiny wires here are the ones for the garbage disposal. The heavier gauge are the ones coming from my power. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take these two off and then we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to test to make sure we got absolutely no voltage. Safety first. Keep everything kind of wrangled up here. I got the dishwasher hose that's wanting to fly out of here on me. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Take one of them off. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, stop what you're doing and call yourself a licensed plumber. Have him come out. Now, I got both my bare leads that are coming in. Nice and easy. No mistakes. We'll go ahead and we'll put our testers on here. Make sure that we have absolutely no voltage coming in here. My meter is reading zero. So we're in the clear. And now I can take this whip off of here, pull it through the hole. Now be careful because you don't want to end up skinning the, the, the shell on these wires and end up hooking it all back up and having a short and next thing you know you're popping fuses and everybody's worried about a fire and stuff. So now we know all the power is disconnected and stuff like that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this Romax piece and get it away from there and get this garbage disposal out of there and then I'll show you the next step. All right, goodbye garbage disposal. Now, as you can see, this is a Badger 100. It's the entry series when it comes to garbage disposal, kind of the lowest in this brand. It's still better than some of the other garbage they got on the market. Um, and it only is rated at a third of a horsepower. This still works, so I'm gonna end up keeping this. I don't know, maybe sell it, used, whatever, at the store. And we're gonna upgrade to the Badger 5 which is a half horsepower because the customer seems to want to have just a little bit more oomph when it comes to grinding up dinner and all that other stuff. So let's unbox that and I'll show you what we got to do with that. This here we are putting in as a replacement. This is the Badger 5, which is half horsepower. Probably one of the most high selling garbage disposals in the entire world. So first thing you're going to do is say is install a read me first. Stop. Well, this is your paperwork. You want to hold on to that. I already know how to install it, but you can read through this if you didn't get enough information from this video. Also, there's warranty information, how you can warranty these. these I believe come with a two-year warranty. And the first thing that we see coming out of the box is right here. This is the bracket. It's like the strainer basket, but it's the bracket that actually holds the entire garbage disposal housing to the basin of your sink. Now, because we already pulled a badger out and we're putting another badger in, these, unless the one that's in there is bad and it's all rotted, 
you can just go ahead and put your new garbage disposal on that one. But in this case, we're going to do the full comprehensive video. I'm going to show you how to take that old one out and put the new one in there. So that way, if you end up going down this road, you'll know exactly how I'm doing this. All right, now that we got the, uh, the holding bracket, the mounting bracket out and stuff, we're going to go ahead. Next thing we have in the bag or in the box is a green bag of accessories. We'll get into that in just a second. Ah, uh, and here comes the lovely, brand new Badger 5 garbage disposal. There she is. Ain't she pretty? All right. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set that thing aside. And I'm going to show you how to remove an old hanging bracket for a garbage disposal and install a new one. So stick around. All right. So if you look closely, this is a new one. There's the old one. Look down on the bottom. Say this is the top of it. All right, that's what you see at the top of the sink. This is what's underneath. Down at the bottom, you've got three screws. All right, let me get that focused in there for you. What you're going to want to do is probably get yourself a flathead screwdriver, and you've got to loosen these three screws up. All right, and then I'll show you how that works on getting the next step taken care of. Flathead screwdriver. See, we're going to go to our first screw. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start loosening this screw up. Second screw. Third screw. Now it's all getting loose. Now it's loose, I can just pretty much back those screws out by hand until they're almost all the way out. You don't have to take them completely out. But you need to loosen them up far enough where this thing can push upwards and we can get to that little goodie. It's a retention ring that holds this whole thing on. And I'll show you. So I pull that up. See it? It's right here. There's a little retention ring right there. Take a flathead screwdriver, utilize the bracket, and pop that ring out of there. See that? There's the ring, came out of there. Now remember, we're gonna have to put the new one in the same way we took the old one out. Now this slides right off, just like that. While we have our flathead screwdriver, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get up here real nice and easy because we don't want to damage the bottom of the basin and pry this little bracket off, just like that. See that? And that stuff that's around there is putty. Now at this point, you can nice and loosen it up, just like that, and take and pop the thing out. That's how you get that thing out of there. But before we put the new one in, you can see there's a bunch of old stuck putty in here. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and prep all that up from this side and the top so we have a nice clean surface and there's no voids to create a leak. All right, now we've got the hanging bracket out. We've got the new one sitting right here. What we need to do is make sure, before we even started the job, I should have told you, make sure to have some plumber's putty. We ain't gonna seal this down with no silicone or none of that garbage or anything. Plumber's putty, all right? We'll get to that in a second. This is exactly the same way and the same setup as what it took out of there. Like I said, some of you guys out there, if you're taking out an original old Badger and you're replacing it with a Badger, as long as this looks like it's in good shape and the putty seems to be intact and stuff with the old hanger bracket, you don't need to go through this step, okay? But this is for the, those of you that have to actually replace this entire assembly. So we're gonna take this thing apart the same way we took the other one apart with a flathead screwdriver. And we're gonna take and we're gonna loosen all three of those screws up like we did on the other ones. This is new, so it's in there pretty good. Remember, all you gotta do is just kinda loosen them up with screwdriver first, and then you get in there and you can loosen it up the rest of the way with your hand. So, let's get all three of those kinda loosened up. Now I can hand loosen them. See these little screws right here? I'm just gonna back them out by hand, just like so. All three of them, you're not gonna take them all the way out though. All right, all you're doing is just loosening the thing up. You don't have to take them all the way out because that's just more time and more work. And you ain't, who's got the time to do all that, right? So once we get these backed out about three quarters of the way, I would say. Now, see this little bracket that goes up and down. Remember that little retention clip we were talking about? Yeah, it's right there. That's got to come out in order to take this piece out. So we're going to take that flathead screwdriver like we did before and we're going to pop that retention ring out. See that? Just like that. Now I slide this out, you want to 
flip it back over and the only thing you want left in your hand is this top piece that's going to go down from the top. Everything else has to go back up the same way you took it apart. Now if you look carefully, I'm going to lay that back down on the floor. On this top part that goes on the top of the basin, there's a little divot around this whole top piece. That's what that retention clip we took off holds onto and it holds the whole assembly together underneath. All right, that's why it's so important you stay organized when you do this job because there's so many little parts and pieces, but it's really not rocket science. I've been doing this for a long, long time, and it's just I could probably do it in my sleep. So now that we have all that apart, we're going to take this piece and our plumber's putty, and we're going to get some of this out, and we're going to generously put a dollop of it around this edge, which is going to be sitting down in the basin, which is going to seal and make it watertight. Plumber's putty. Knead it very well with your hands, then just like a noodle. Start at the bottom, you just go back and forth between your hands. You want to have about a half an inch of a ring. See how I'm doing that? You just keep rolling it out, rolling it out, rolling it out, just like that. See that? Now I got myself a noodle. We're going to take that piece that goes through the top flip it over and we're going to take that putty and wrap it around that ring just like that. See that? And we're going to kind of smoosh it all together so it all becomes one and it's all adhered to the bottom section. Make sure you have plenty on there. Now we're going to go back up top and I'm going to show you how you have to seat these things in and how to make it the most aesthetically pleasing to look at if that's what you really want to look at. All right. So here we are at the top of the basin. There's that putty and everything that I put on the ring. Now, aesthetically pleasing, like I was talking about, it says writing on it. I don't know if you read that or not. It says Insincorator. It's got the Insincorator name. So when you put this back down inside of the hole there, you want to try to line this up so you can actually look straight on where it says that name. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to kind of set this down into place. And I'm going to back and forth, nice and easy, put some pressure down on there, line it up so it's in the center of the hole. You're going to start seeing the putty squeezing out, which is good. That's what you want. It's spreading the way that we want it to be so there are no leaks. Now, you can see it's ready to go at that position. Next step, we go down underneath again. Now, when we took this piece apart in the beginning, remember I told you to back these screws out about two thirds of the way, because we need as much room as we can. Remember, we've got a little cardboard friction gasket that sits on top of here. It sits all by itself. There's three pieces here. A friction gasket, you got a triple sided bracket, and then you've got your screws in your other bracket, which the garbage disposal hangs on. Time what you're gonna do, this is very tricky. If you have a helper, it'd be a good idea for him to go up top and hold down on this apparatus so I don't push it out. In this case, I'm by myself. We're gonna take all three of those pieces and we're gonna push them up into place. Kind of like that. I'm gonna hold my hand in the middle there and kind of try to squeeze it back up there a little bit. Next step, while you're holding on to that, because it will fall is you need to get that little retention ring. Now it is split. See that? I'm going to take the back side of it, slide it up into that little groove I was telling you about underneath all this, nice and carefully. This is tricky. And pop that little ring back into place. Now this thing sits by itself. The ring, which is up inside here, holds that whole assembly together. Now, we are ready to take these screws, and we'll do them by hand to start with. We'll just hand tighten them as far as we can, and so you can't tighten them anymore. Now, I forgot to tell you, the bottom of these screws, you can also use a Phillips set if you need to. It's set up for that. Now I'm going to go through and tighten each one of these three screws. What's doing is it's just pulling down against that bracket and pulling that strainer ring up top against it. It's pushing force against force creating a solid seal on the top end side with that putty. That way we don't have any kind of leaks. And that retention ring holds everything in place so nothing falls apart. Once we get this where 
You really can't turn them anymore. Then we'll be ready for our next step. That feels pretty good. I like that. Now we're ready for our next step. All right, so now that we've got our hanging bracket all set and ready to go, we're ready for our garbage disposal, right? Wrong. There's a couple small things that need to happen first. Remember back in the beginning of the video, I'd mentioned the three things to look for, the drain setup, how the power got in there, and do you have a dishwasher? Right now, we have a dishwasher in this house, and you saw me unhook the drain hose from the dishwasher from the side outlet to the garbage disposal, right here. Now, before you decide to do anything else at this point, if you do indeed have a garbage uh, uh, dishwasher, in this little slot, see up inside of there, there's a plastic knockout peg. That piece has to come out of there. It's up inside of there. If not, and you hook your dishwasher back up to it and you run your dishwasher, it's got nowhere to drain. And if you're a plumber and you forget to do that, it's gonna be a callback. So what you're gonna to wanna to do next is nice and gently get yourself probably a flathead or some sort of screwdriver, lay this whole thing down on the floor, put it in there and bang that little thing out of there. But once you get that piece out, it's gonna fall down inside of the garbage disposal. So you're gonna to need to find a way, open up the flaps, whatever, shake that thing out of there. Because if you leave that little plastic tab, the knockout tab, and you go to run the garbage disposal, it get hung up on the teeth inside of there. And now you have problems. So take a look and see how I go about removing this knockout tab. Remember, this is only if you have a dishwasher. If you don't have a dishwasher, skip this step. Leave that knockout tab in there because if you don't have a drain hooked up to there and you knock it out of there, when you run water, it's gonna come flowing out of there. So this is for dishwasher install. I took a flathead screwdriver and my nearest heavy duty wrench and I'm going to knock it out. See that? Now if you look up close inside of there, the knockout tab is gone. Where'd it go? It went down inside of here. Don't leave that thing in there. If you need to, you can actually take the rubber piece off of here. It's kind of a pain in the butt or just try to dump this thing over and shake that thing out. There, see that? There's your knockout tab. That has to come out if you're installing this with the dishwasher in place. Now that we have the knockout tab out of there, we're ready to hook our power back up to this because first of all, we don't want to be working up underneath the thing where we can't see after it's already been installed. So now is the next step to hook up your power and get the thing mounted up to the sink. Now what we're actually doing is, is we're doing everything we already did, but in reverse. Remember we got that little plate down here, it's got a single screw. You don't need to back it all the way out. Just loosen it up and let that thing fall out. Now we got two little leads right here, black and white. And then we got our power that's coming in from the house. I need to get these power lines and my ground through this little hole. Now usually, in this case, it didn't come with one and I'm elect not an electrician so I don't have the extra part. That would be that little boot that's screwed in there that's got the two little screws that tightens that up so it doesn't move. In this case, we're just going to have to slide this thing in through that hole so it comes back out this end and tie our leads in and our ground in. But be careful not to skin the coating off of these wires when you're doing that on these sharp edges or else you're going to end up getting a short or a blow a fuse or a breaker or something like that. So I'm not going to sit here and show you all the details how to do it. Just remember to take your time and if you forget anything I'm telling you, go back in the video, rewind it, step by step, pause. We're going to get the power hook up to this and then I'll show you how to mount this thing to the sink. See that? That's what you want to see. You want to be able to see those wire nuts in there, ground hooked up, last bit that you're going to do, make sure everything's stuffed in there well, is go ahead and take a little plate back on here, slide it into place, just like that, and then just take and tighten down that single screw that we have going on there. That, it's hard to do this one-handed, it's got to stay in that bracket, but you've got the idea, right? Okay. All right, now that the power is hooked up, you can kind of see the hard whip and stuff, I'm going to gently flip this thing back over and if you take a look real close see you got these three little slotted pieces that's how we took the old one off remember I had the Phillips head screwdriver and we got in there and we turned it we'll get this thing nice and loose and ready to go your next bet is we're going to try to set this thing up on the seal from the hanging bracket 
And then we're gonna have to take and we're gonna have to slide that thing so it fits inside that bracket and it holds off the bottom of the basin. All right, here goes nothing. Set that in place, just like that. Get that thing loose. Now, if you're having a problem with that thing moving, get that thing loosened up. Get it loosened up real good. The top collar sleeve, get that thing loose. All right, so it'll turn. Set that thing up into place, the rubber end first. Take a little collar sleeve. You're gonna have to catch that groove up top. Just like that. See, I caught that groove. Just enough to hold it in place. I can grab my Phillips head screwdriver like this and I could take and just tighten it to the end, just like that. And everybody's happy. Now we have a garbage disposal that is pre-hung, ready to go. Our next step is to go ahead and hook up our dishwasher hose to our outlet, which we took the little knockout tab out of. Still has a little clip on there. See it? Just like that. Go ahead and we'll slide that on there. Take a pair of channel locks. We're gonna pull that, squeeze that tab. Let me see my arm is in the way a little bit. So then come around the back end of there. And squeeze this little tab so we can get that deal back on there. Just like that. See that? It's all hooked up and ready to go. Last step is for us to go ahead and get our drain set up. Oh crap, we forgot. How did that drain get set up in the first place? Let's review. First of all, I still got old garbage disposal. Can you see that? It's got a little elbow on there with a plate, just like that. Remember that little green accessory bag that I showed you in the beginning when we unboxed the Badger 5? Let's go ahead and let's open that up. Nice and easy because there's a lot of parts in here. Empty them out. Ah, right there. There's that elbow we were talking about. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to have to put this elbow with the plate and two mounting screws onto the side where our drain is gonna actually hook up. I'm gonna show you a little mistake that I made that we're gonna make a quick repair on. That way you don't have to waste the time doing stuff like that. Now if you take a look closely, my house drain is over here. I mounted this thing where my drain is set up over here. That's not right. That's not how our picture was taken. Remember we took a picture? Let's pull that picture up right there see we took a picture of how this whole thing was set up so we know that drain piece see that drain piece right there was on the same side as what my dishwasher hose well now I got the dishwasher hose sitting over here on this side and my drains over here but my house drains over there so I need to take and carefully spin this thing and you can spin it without breaking anything that's the nice thing about these disposals check it out I'll show you right now I'm gonna take and carefully spin this whole garbage disposal around. Let's not kink any cords, any hoses, anything like that. Let everything move freely. So we're back like that. Now did you see that? I popped this hose up. So we'll get back to that in a second. That hose will go back on. I didn't have it connected all the way. But now my drain is on the same side as what I had my house drain. Now we can take our little elbow and our little bracket Take your little bracket, slide it, so it comes down through there. See, there's a little lip on there. Before you go any further though, you have a rubber seal. That little rubber seal has to go over top of the lip of that, just like that. Make sure it's all seated nicely. See that? I've got a rubber lip sitting there. And this little retention ring slides up against there. Now, if you look carefully on this garbage disposal, I've got two holes. Let me bring that in a little closer. Two holes right here. Those are for my screws. So I'm going to first and foremost, and these are flathead screws. So you're going to have to have your flathead screwdriver. Not sure what I did with mine. I'm sure it's somewhere very close to me. Anyways, you can start this. You send it in there. Now remember that rubber seal is seating in to the inside ring of the drain assembly on the garbage disposal. Seat that thing in there. Slide your ring up. Take the first screw. You can get things started by hand. All right. Nice and easy. Have patience with this. That's the biggest thing. There's the first screw. And here is the second screw. And we're going to take them. We're just going to get them hand started. Just like that. All right. That's what we're looking at. Remember the old garbage disposal. 
Remember? Had the same setup, just like that. So that's what we have to have on this, and we have to twist that thing back. Let me find my screwdriver and get that thing tightened up. All right, flathead screwdriver. Let's go ahead. Hold that in place so you can see that little rubber seal that's pushing up against there. Do not over tighten these. You want metal into plastic. Metal will always win. Snug it. Snug. Once it stops, stop. Don't try to wrench down on it or anything like that. Make sure that your 90 is pretty much perpendicular where it was at. Now, if you remember right, when we took the old garbage disposal out, I had a nut and a ferrule that actually mounted on here to hook up the rest of the drain. I still have that. Nut in first. Beveled end of ferrule down. Slide that up in there like this. Now we're set and ready to hook up to the house drain. First of all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take and turn this whole thing just like that, like it was. Now it's lined up over here to where the house drain is. There it is. I didn't take everything apart in here. So what we're going to want to do is follow suit, slide this thing back up where it was in the first place, just like that. Start our nut, nice and easy. Might need both hands to get it started. Do not cross thread these. Take your time, nice and easy. Nobody's in a hurry here. I'm gonna get this thing started over here on this end, where the garbage disposal is. Hold on to it so it doesn't slide down. You want it as much up there in that sleeve as you possibly can. Get that tightened. This is the other nut that I loosened up. Get that on there. And you're gonna take a regular pair of channel locks. Do not over tighten these, plastic on plastic. And you can take them, you're just gonna snug that thing on there. And I'm gonna take and just snug this one on here as well. Now, even though I didn't touch anything else in here, I'm gonna make sure that I go through and just snug all the nuts that are involved with this whole drain assembly, just in case when I took the old one out, I might have loosened something up. Everything seems to be in great working order. I don't think we're gonna have any problems. We're gonna test everything out anyways. And that's all good. Last thing we have, remember I made that mistake and I didn't put on the drain hose the way I was supposed to and it popped off on me for the dishwasher. And here it is right here. Go ahead and we're gonna squeeze that again. Slide that thing down and out of the way. Bring it back up through. Stuff it on there as good as you possibly can. See that? Let me bring that in just a little bit so you can kind of see. Right there. That's our little drain assembly that goes to the dishwasher. I didn't have that on all the way the proper way. Take my channel locks, squeeze that clip, or if you have a hose clamp where you need to use a screwdriver or something, take and snaggle that thing on there. Now it's not all the way on, that's the mistake I made in the last one. You have to be careful, just take your time. Like I said, you get in a rush, you get frustrated, things break, you have leaks. That's gonna be a winner right there. Now, we are all completely set and put together. It's time to go hit our breaker back on at the panel and give it a shot. All right, let's make our way back over here to the disposal. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the switch on first to make sure that we have the power we need. And that's over here on the wall. Ooh, listen to that baby just hum. There she is, running like gold. And our next step is we're gonna to have to turn the water on and test to make sure we have absolutely no leaks going on. I forgot to mention you, up top, now the work's done underneath. Remember all that putty? Yeah, it squeezed out of here. I'm just gonna take and we're gonna pull that putty out of there. See that? That's the excess. It's still good. And what this will end up doing is almost like a strainer basket or pop-up assembly when you use this uh, sort of stuff. Uh, what you're gonna need to do is get something and be gentle. Don't start scratching people's sinks up. And go down through here and just clean up some of that putty. Now you can come back in an hour and see more. That's because it's gonna to continue to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until it's met its desired seal, and then it'll stop squeezing out of there. So as a homeowner or as a customer or as a plumber, make sure, don't get freaked out if you see putty after the plumber's left or after you've left the job and you come back and there's some there. It's just sealing itself to the base. You just take something nice and easy and go around the edge of that and remove the excess putty. Okay, so here's the time of truth. Let's go ahead and turn the water on and look down below and see if we've got any kind of leaks happening.
Now we're looking. Don't see anything leaking. Everything's nice and dry. I'd say we got a winner. Now at this point, if you absolutely had to, you could run the dishwasher and extract a load in here, make sure you got no leaks going on from there. But as long as you know you got this thing back on there and it's sealed properly, we're looking for leaks is here on the drain assembly, as well as up here where it seals to the bottom of the basin. Everything looks absolutely great. Let's go ahead and turn the garbage disposal on at the same time and see what happens at this point. So stick right with me. I'm not going anywhere. Here we go. <laughs> that, my friend, is a successful, comprehensive way of replacing a garbage disposal in your home. All right, so I wasn't actually going to talk about this, uh, but I'm going to do that. All right, now that you have your new garbage disposal in the house and all that stuff, make sure to keep your paperwork and fill it out for warranty purposes and all that good stuff. Now, on the bottom of the garbage disposal, and this is on the Badger and Sink Raider series, remember the little green accessory bag I showed you? Yeah, it comes with a little double hockey stick. It's like an Allen key, all right? Make sure to save this, tape it to the side of the inside of the cabinet, whatever. This is how you're going to troubleshoot when you have a problem. If you look down here, I got the old garbage disposal. See that? Right dead center in the middle. That's what that little key is made for. Or you can set it inside of there, like so, and it manually turns the inside of that thing in case the thing gets stuck. You turn the thing on, it goes I'm not going to get into detail, as well as a reset button down here. A lot of times, if this thing's in distress and it's got a bunch of garbage stuck in there, or maybe something dropped in there and it gets stuck, it'll pop the breaker on there. So if it's popped, turn your power off and get in there and see if you can get the thing fixed. Don't work on a garbage disposal with the power on, especially if you're going to unclog one of these things. You hear it going, and eh, turn it off, turn the power off before you get this thing in there. A lot of times, instead of calling a plumber, you can nice and easy back and forth and get that thing unclogged or whatever's wedging and sticking up those teeth inside. Well, hey, that's all the time we got for this one. Sorry the video ran a little bit longer than what I really wanted to, but I thought it was very important for you to see a comprehensive step-by-step -step of how to replace a garbage disposal the proper way and not just have a handyman come in or have to pay for a plumber or somebody like that. Listen, if you don't feel comfortable with what you're doing, stop what you're doing. Call yourself a licensed plumber or whatever. But this is very doable of a job you can take care of yourself as a homeowner. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any kind of questions, and I'm sure you do, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about them. I'll try to reply to as many as I can. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, this has been Plumbing with Tim. Keep plumbing.